Hi everyone and welcome back to uh, Illustrator and in this uh, video we're going to show you how to create a 3D box out of a two-dimensional design and uh, one of the things I think is very important to note here is that whenever you're designing a package for a client it's a good idea for you to show them uh, as close as possible as to what their finished product is going to look like uh, when you don't have the resources or the uh, actual opportunity to build a box showing them a box that looks like it's finished is the next best thing so we're gonna do that now by showing you how simple it is to create a box inside Illustrator that is fully 3D realized and we're gonna do that using the 3D tools that are built into the application and another feature which you may not be familiar with which is the symbol palette which is a great way to actually store all the information for boxes now when we're dealing with this what you have to do is that this is similar to some of the things that you would normally be doing with fireworks. If you're already familiar with fireworks, you know the difference between a symbol and an instance. A symbol is actually something that you would store in a library that you could use several times if you want to. And the way that you would use those symbols would be to go into the symbol palette and then drag out an instance of that symbol. And uh, that way you could drag multiple copies of it out and make as many of them as you want. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to take all three of these objects here and put them into the symbols palette and then we're going to use those pieces and then wrap them around a 3D shape. So to get started, let's handle the symbol information first. In Illustrator, the symbol palette is identified by this particular symbol which looks like a club from the card playing days. And if you clicked on this, it shows you some of the default symbols which are already stored in here. What you're going to do is you're going to drag these pieces in one at a time and then we're going to name them as graphics let's start with this piece which is going to be the top of the box I'm going to physically grab this and drag this over to the box now if you happen to see that only part of the box is going with you what you may want to do is make sure you got both pieces drag them over and I'm going to name this symbol top and we're going to save the type as a graphic don't worry about the rest of these these don't pertain to this project Press OK. You'll see now the top is now inside the symbol, and this piece out here has become an instance of that symbol. The identifying characteristic is this new red border and this little plus sign that you see going through the top here. So that actually is now a symbol with an instance out here. Here's the symbol. Here's the instance. Let's do the side panel next. Grab this. Bring this over into the box. When you get there, let's name this one sides save it as a graphic of course press OK and now you'll see the sides been added to the symbol box notice over here that this now has the characteristics of an instance one last time see the way it looks when it's selected grab this drag it to the symbols palette let's call it front save the type as a graphic and then let's press OK now you'll notice that all three of these pieces have been added to this and they're no longer graphic images so we're not going to be using these particular pieces which are instances of all of this so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them now you're probably thinking this is a pretty scary thing I just deleted all of my original artwork not to worry because in order to get these back you simply go in and you grab one of the symbols themselves and you drag an instance of it out and here is the artwork exactly the way as it was before but we're going to go a step further and apply this to a three-dimensional box so I'm going to get rid of this and we're working with a clean slate now the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to create a rectangle that's going to be the 3D shape now one of the things that I know because of the boxes that I've designed that the box measures four and a half by six so that's the size of the front of the box so we're going to create a rectangle now by clicking on the rectangle tool and just moving it anywhere onto the page and then clicking in here and we're going to set that size now so the width is 4.5 press my tab key to move to height and then type in the number six now if you wanted to see the inches next to height just press the tab key again and it automatically fills in the default setting now if you happen to see something else showing up in here like M's or pixels or millimeters that just means that your illustrator preferences are set to that it doesn't make any difference because if you simply put in 4.5 and then the word inches it will automatically calculate that for whatever measurement you're using so you're still okay but if you definitely want inches to show up in here all the time you have got to go back over to Illustrator and then set the preferences from here let's press OK and here's my rectangle 
Now I want to actually extrude the box out a little bit to get some kind of a shape on this. So I'm going to now turn this into a three-dimensional shape. So with the box selected, just simply go to Effect, go to 3D, and then choose Extrude and Bevel. Now, in the Extrude and Bevel dialog box, which you see here, is that this is going to control how this piece actually looks. It's set right now to a default setting of Off Axis Front and here are the X, Y, and Z rotation axes. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on preview and you'll see that the box has already been set with a specific angle. Now the depth of this doesn't go back far enough because back over here on the side of my boxes this actually is a two inch deep piece and the top also goes back two inches. So I need to change the extrude depth to two inches. Now we've got a small problem here. You'll notice that it's in points. But remember what I explained to you before all you have to do is to type in the proper information and Illustrator is smart enough to figure out what you're doing. So I'm going to type in the number two and then I'm going to use the quotation or the double quotes for the inches symbol. Press my tab key and it automatically calculates this at 144 point. Now I've got the artwork already saved here. I'm going to now take the artwork and then map it or stick it on these individual panels. Now to do this what you have to do is you've got to go in and click on the Map Art button. Once you click on Map Art, you'll notice now that the Map Art window actually tells you you have these multiple panel set. I'm going to shift this over a little bit so we can see all the panels. Now in these individual boxes here, you'll see this identifying the six sides. And if you'll notice this red border here, it's telling you where the six sides are. So this is side one, which is the front, two, which is the back, and so on. There's a side, there's the bottom, there is the other side, and there's the top. So what we're going to do is to start mapping these pieces one at a time. So let's go back to the one that's for the top, which is the one for number six. So here's the top piece here. Notice that there's also a little button here that says symbol. All of my artwork is still in the symbol library and this is a link directly to it. So I'm simply going to go up here to this stage click on this little icon and then scroll down until I get to the top box which I saved in the piece. Click on this and you'll see now that it shows up in the window filling this area but it has also automatically mapped itself to the top of the box. Okay? Let's keep going. Go back over now to the side of the box which is this piece here. Now don't be discouraged if this is turned sideways. We're still on this particular side. Go in and choose one of the sides now. And now you'll notice that it's mapped the sideways box this way. You'll see here that it's also upside down. So in order to get this to work, I need to rotate this so that the word growl is going up in this direction. So to do that, you'll notice that some of the tools are here just as they are in Illustrator. If you get close enough to this, you actually can turn and rotate the box like this. So let's turn it this way and see what happens. Now if you want this to snap to a specific place, just simply press and hold down your shift key and it actually snaps the graphic in 45 degree increments. When you let the mouse go, you'll see now that it's actually mapped this to the piece. Now don't be discouraged if this actually goes slightly off to the left. As long as it's correct over here, you're in good shape. Here's the bottom which we don't have to do and here's the opposite side. And this is the back of the box which we're not going to do and this is the front which is the last piece. Click here, scroll down to front, click on this, and you'll see now that the Growler logo has now been placed on the absolute front of the box. Now I got all the pieces in place. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And now you'll see that all of the information has been mapped to the box itself. Now, if I'm not 100% satisfied with this angle, I can go back and make some changes and adjustments to it. For example, I can go back into this box piece here, and I can rotate the axis of the box so it's a little bit more tilted this way. And now I have the box at a slightly different angle. I also have the ability to change some of the lighting on the box as well, too. If you clicked over here on More Options, you can expand the box and play around with some of the shading effects. Like for example, I can add additional light by going here and then clicking on the piece with a new lighting source. Here's the new lighting button and I want a new light piece to be 
somewhere along the bottom of the box, which is about right here. Now I'm going to grab this lighting source and drag it down to the corner of the box, like so. And that will be my final lighting source. Now, once I press OK, I now have a three-dimensional box here that I can manipulate any way that I want. If I needed to create other copies of it, I could also go through and then use a different effect. Let's say I wanted to have a different angle of the box there. I'm going to go ahead and select this with the selection tool. And then I'm going to press my option key and drag this box over to the left. Now you notice that I have two boxes which are facing exactly the same angle. But if I wanted to, I could change the angle of the boxes to give it a different look. I'm going to use, once this box is selected, we're not going to go back to the effects menu. You'll notice if I move over here to the appearance panel that I have access to the commands here. Always make sure if you're going to make some adjustments to the original work that you do it from the appearance palette and not from the command at the top. All that will do will just erase all your stuff and then go back to the default setting. Let's click on this and it brings back the regular settings. Don't be discouraged by the fact that the box is actually gone because all we did was, was just go back to the window and previews turned off. Simply go back and press preview. And everything comes back the way it is. Now I'm going to change the angle by grabbing the box and tilting it down slightly so we have more of a look like this. When you're happy with the angle, release the mouse. And there's our new angle for the box. Now I'm going to press OK. And here are the two different boxes that I have here now. Now that I've got this shape the way I want it, and I'm pretty happy with the way the box is looking now, I'm going to drag these into position where I'm happy with them, and then I'm going to expand the appearance of each one. That can be found under the Object menu and choose Expand Appearance. Now I have a box that has all four sides attached to it. And so now you can see these settings here. I'm going to do the same thing on this box over here. And now the two boxes are permanently stored in these positions. It moves around a lot smoother, a lot more fluid. And now if you wanted to, you could actually go back and then have these boxes floating in a background that has some kind of an unusual shape on it. Like, for example, if you wanted to put something behind it, like a gradient or a picture or a sign, you could easily do that now by making some kind of a very, very creative advertisement. The other cool thing about this is that you can actually have the boxes either overlapping one another or passing behind one another if you wanted to. Like, I could grab this box and bring it to the front. And I can move it into position like so. And so that's a cool way of actually getting a three-dimensional box out of a series of 2D objects. Practice this on your own. The files in order to do this are already stored inside the joint area. So just simply download these pieces, follow the video, and try it out for yourself.